Hey guys, I had to go close the doors because nobody wants to hear the laundry, I'm sure. I put a little makeup on for y'all. Does it look better? <laughs> so we're here this year with a tutorial for my creative year. If you're new um, to my channel, welcome. Um, my creative year is a Facebook group that I and some of my creative friends um, uh, run and manage. Uh, that is a safe creative spot with tutorials, free content. We do a daily creative word over there. Um, we do occasional broadcasts to the group that are only in the group. Um, and we try to inspire people to follow their dream of being creative and give them ideas of how we can do that. So if you'd like to join my creative year, the link is in the description below. So check it out. Um, each one of the teachers brings a video a month um, along with other content, but we bring a video a month. We do air it here on YouTube and um, put the link over in the Facebook group where you can access us with questions, comments, concerns, inspiration, hopefully, any of that. Um, this month, our topic of the month is passion. Passion? Yep, passion. Uh, we also have a challenge word, and the challenge word for the month is boundaries. Those two words go really well together, I think, and they really make you think hard, not just with art, but philosophically speaking, in the grand scheme of things, it, really think about those two words. So, of course, we will bring you challenges every month, um, for instance, one of our past daily creative words was goat. So, okay, if you're going to do an art page on a goat, you could collage a goat, you could draw a goat. Sometimes our words are more philosophical in thinking, and we really want to inspire you to think and to really break out of your boundaries and out of your box and be more creative. This month is especially going to be that with a word like passions. You, of course, could take it... Um, the obvious way, um, what inspires passion, who inspires passion in your life, um, romantic passion, uh, protective passion, as in with your children, um, love, um, friendship, um, your philosophical and faith-based beliefs that you're passionate about. Um, uh, for instance, I'm passionate about just being kind to humanity. I don't understand why we need to be assholes all the time. Pardon my French. Uh, anyway, and yeah, that's really me. That's just really how I talk. There's no uh, pretending for the camera. This is just, this is me. Eye bags, no chin, baggy, fat neck, and all. So anyway. Um, so this month I really wanted to encourage you all to follow your passions and do what you feel is right for you. Stand up for yourself and what you're passionate about. And at the same time, if you feel like intentionally or not, boundaries have been put up on what you really want to do and what you're really passionate about, I'd love to see you break those boundaries. Um, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What matters is life is short and you need to do what's going to make you happy. Whatever, whatever that is. For me, that's um, living life, loving my family, um, experiencing the world and doing art while I'm doing it all. I love exploring my new neighborhood. If you don't know, if you haven't seen my channel before, I moved um, in September of last year to, across a different, to a different state. I now live in the state of Oregon. I'm loving exploring my new neighborhood and seeing the new sites and meeting the new people. Um, there is not too far from me a place called the Tualatin Wildlife Refuge, I believe is the name of it. And there's a lot of little refuges and walk, walking, nature walks and things like that around me. There's a million of them, um, but the Tualatin Wildlife Refuge is really a fun place to go walking and go on a hike. It's beautiful. I'll try to insert some pictures here for you all. Um, there's also some places that you wouldn't think of as being interesting and exciting, like we went to Hughes Water Crud. They sell pond supplies. 
Hughes Water Pond water fi features, something like that. I'll link them in the description below. Um, if you're from the area, you know what I'm talking about. Hughes, Hughes Water Features maybe. Um, it's a store. It, we have a water feature in our backyard. It really needed cleaning and maintenance. And so we were doing that and we didn't know where to buy supplies. Somebody recommended Hughes. So we went over there and to our supply surprise, it's not only a store, it's sort of a mini, mini botanical garden, mostly with water features. It's gorgeous. Again, I'll insert some pictures here. All of these things inspire me definitely for my art and work. Uh, the lily pond uh, feature they had at Hughes really is inspiring me and I think we're going to do something loosely based on that in on our journal page today. So I'm going to take you to the table. We're going to speed forward. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I've got my phone here. Yes, I know it's cracked. I've dropped it a couple too many times, but it still works. Um, I'm going to, oh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to not go to sleep because that wouldn't be good. So we're gonna make it never go to sleep, which is gonna eat up the battery, but I got a charging phone case that's not charged. <laughs> well, we'll get as far as we can get, right? Um, okay, then we're gonna open the camera roll. I'm gonna put a copy of the picture over in the Facebook group. So if you would like a copy of the picture, <laughs> you gotta be part of the group. <laughs> But anyway, you can also screenshot it. Whoops, there we go. Screenshot it right here. And you can use any water lily pond photo or a photo of something that's really you're really passionate about, that you really love, that you really are inspired by for this. You don't have to do this one. All right, so I'm gonna put that there. We've got this here. I'm gonna get out my good old trusty Bic pen. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle. I'm going to get out some gesso and some paint and I'll be right back. All right, this is the Dean and Wakely Media Journal and I am not super hot on the paper and it especially doesn't like um, taking a lot of paint or water media necessarily. The acrylic paint is probably going to be fine, but I'm going to give the pages or the at least the square where we're going to do a painting, by the way, we're going to do a painting, um, a coat of gesso before we get started. This is clear gesso, um, but that doesn't really matter. Just give it the coat of gesso. And this is bleed through from the page um, before this, but it's fine. Give that a dry. Got a bunch of little tubes of acrylic gouache and sample sizes of uh, Liquitex Basics and some Amsterdam paints. We're gonna use these. Um, that just sounds interesting to use them. I'm gonna start with now when I paint with watercolor, I start with my lighter value colors, my lightest colors that are going to be in the piece, and I work my way slowly darker until I'm satisfied. With acrylic paint, I tend to do the opposite. I start darker and work my way lighter. Sometimes at the end, I go back and add little touches of super, super bright like a neon or a super, super dark like a Payne's gray or a black to just make things pop, but that's generally how I work. So we're going to start with, I've got... Deep violet, navy blue, and then this is a gray, a neutral gray. So I'm gonna put just some blobs. That's probably too much of that. We'll make it work. And I'm going to get out, I think I'm going to use this, I'm going to transfer some of that over there. My brush is peeling. I think my friend Mike Deacon was just talking about that in one of his videos. He had a, had some brushes he's not hot on because they paint peels on them. And sometimes brushes that don't have a good finish on it will do that. This particular brush, that's not the case. It's poor owner maintenance. <laughs> Meaning, aka, I, you know, 
Hope you used the brush. In case you didn't get my reference. I leave them, I tend to leave them in the water too long. Because that will do it to some brushes. Not all, but some. And I tend to have brushes that seem to do that more often than not. Okay, we're not necessarily going to let that dry. And now we're going to go in with some greens. Let's see. Greens, greens, greens. This is kind of fun. I can't remember the last time I did a live on camera um, painting. You know what I mean. I mean, it's recorded, but you know what I mean. Without speeding up anything. So this, these are, I know two of these are not green, but oh, just bear with me, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna get out another one of these scrubby tools and this is a silicone like paint pusher. And now we're gonna put some paint on my palette I have here on the side. We could mix green if one of these is not exactly the right color green. Now I'm an abstract impressionist style of painter. I tend to not do realism. So as I'm working on this painting, you need to keep that in mind. So I'm, I'm looking to give you the impression of what I'm seeing and not necessarily exactly what I'm seeing. My, my personal teacher, Pauline Agnew, would say that you're painting the emotions of the piece. She's not wrong. And I'm not, I didn't dry the background colors because I'm all right with it if they blend a little bit. That won't be so true a little farther on, but it is at the moment. this color. I am just looking at the picture and putting color and marks where I think the painting needs it in comparison to the picture. And you notice I'm just dabbing. I'm just dabbing. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, now we're gonna go into the blue, I think.
Okay, I'm going to switch brushes and mark making tools and grab something different. This is literally just a dowel. Every time I start a painting, I think I'm not going to get my fingers involved. I'm going to try to keep my hands clean. If you're like me, just FYI, that never works. <laughs> I always get my hands dirty. Every, every single time. So I don't paint normally without baby wipes nearby. If you're painting with watercolor and you put something in the wrong place, you can't do this. But if you're painting with acrylic, you definitely can. So I'm just layering the greens. I like to work and get my background to where I'm satisfied before I add in my focal point. I always paint that way, whether I'm working with any medium. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's um, a watercolor or acrylic, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're gonna bring in some pink. Let's see, we need a uh, yellow, we need a bright yellow, maybe this one, what's this one, cadmium yellow, yeah that one might be good, we don't need too much of it I don't think. Okay, and I need, it might be time for an actual paintbrush, let's see. A round one. I can't tell you what what size because it's all like, yeah. All right, so we're gonna take our round brush right about here. I need a separate one for the yellow. This is a knitting needle. Those of you who knit will recognize it. It's a double pointed needle, which I don't use for knitting anymore, just FYI. Now remember I said we were taking inspiration from the photo that I took, right? Something I'm passionate about is finding inspiration in the world around me, finding um, inspiration for life and creativity. I think it's there if you just only look. If you're in chronic pain or mobility challenged and you're saying, I can't get out there and I can't look. And if you can't find a way, then Go and look on the internet for pictures or you know what, don't even go anywhere, go into your backyard. Your own backyard probably can provide you 
with lots of inspiration. I need one more because I like threes. I think I want it over here. Maybe just open a window. If you're agoraphobic and you're like, I can't go outside, open a window. Look at the sky, look at the sunset. I'm constantly taking pictures of the sunset sky out our back patio. I don't go anywhere to do that. I just do it here. I don't need to go anywhere. Okay, so we're gonna do one more thing. Let's neon. I love to add neons. It gives it a really bright pop of color. I do it in my journals. I do it in canvases. These are Americana neons. I have pink, orange, green, and yellow. So we're going to add some neon to the flowers. Okay, we're going to just wipe the brush off like that. I'm not going to clean it too much. I'm going to go in with some of the green. I'm, I'm using a very light touch to the canvas and I am twirling the brush as I'm making marks. There's no need to dig. There's also no need to try to exactly copy the photo. If you want a perfect copy of an image, take a picture. If you want an artistic impression of an image, paint a, paint a painting. Try to draw what you see, not what you think you, or I'm sorry, paint what you see as far as color and emotion and not what you think you see. Too much, we might need to add some of the dark green back. Okay. 
So this is the part where I usually look at the painting and decide what I need to add back as far as the darks. There's always something every time. And instead of stopping to go get a color, I'm going to just mix from what I have. Sorry if you hear all that noise in the background, that is the washing machine. Yeah, like that, because I forgot to close the doors again. That looks pretty good, I think. I do think we need, we lost a little bit of this violet, let's see. Oh heck, my finger works. Sometimes I will not only switch to a non-painting tool, but I will switch hands and use my non-dominant hand to make more interesting marks on the journal page or the painting. Yeah, that works for me. All right, let's get our pen back. some of our lines back. I love that. So I want to add a quote around the page and I'm going to find one and I will be right back. Okay, so to finish off this page this month, I found the perfect quote, but we'll get to that in a minute. I could wipe um, out these um, stains from the prior page with some gesso if I chose to, but passion like life are not perfect. And it's gonna be filled with your journey to whatever you're passionate about or whatever you're going to be passionate about, whatever is gonna make you happy, is gonna be fraught with potholes and obstacles um, like most things are. Um, those of you who you know, for instance, who are married and have been for a while, and are happily married, no, and even those that were, you know, didn't make it, no, that it's not easy. And it's filled with um, upset and craziness, but the outcome is just so worth it. Whether it's art or uh, a relationship, or it doesn't matter. It's worth the journey to get to where you want to go. Um, so I'm going to leave the stains. And I found a Claude Monet quote, quote. It's going to be perfect for this one. And it reads, Water lilies is an extension of my life. Without the water, the lilies cannot survive, survive as I am without art. Claude Monet. So we're going to write that around the perimeter here of the painting in the middle of the page and call it done. So I'm going to get that done and I'll be right back.
There you have it. It didn't quite go all the way around, so I just added some dots to make it visually balanced. And that works for me. And of course, I got paint on my elbow, but you know, it's all right. So I love that page. It was quick and simple and to the point. It makes the statement I needed to make. And I will tell you, say to you, it may be the inspiration for future work because I really do like the way this turned out. What are you passionate about and how can you express that in your work this week, this month? I would love to see you do that and I would love to have you comment below. Um, if you would like to see more of what all myself and all the other teachers are up to, we would love to have you join us over in the Facebook group. If you would like to follow me on social media to see what I'm up to every day, because I do do some kind of art or something almost every day, um, or you want to support the free content here on YouTube or over on Facebook, there's a bunch of different kind of links where you can do any and all of that stuff on the link tree list of links, which is in the description below. So check it out. My happy mail address is also down there if you would so choose to send me happy mail. I love happy mail. Um, and what else? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And, um, you know, I'd love it this month if you all found a small YouTuber um, and you went and showed them some love. Maybe shared them if you are part of the My Creative Year Facebook group. Uh, well, no, not over there. But you could, I take that back. Don't share it in My Creative Year, but share it over in my other group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. Why don't we try to share some of these small YouTuber groups? Uh, maybe you guys want to leave a name of somebody uh, who's a small YouTuber, a small art YouTuber, um, or life YouTuber um, in the comments below. And let's share their names and let's show them some love too. That's it for today and that's it for right now. I will see you all later. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later. Bye guys.